Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for intermediate algebra. In this video, we're going to look at section 6.5, which is dealing with radical functions. Now, hopefully we recall uh, function notation, where f of x means the same thing as y. It's just that x is our input value, and the function evaluated for x is our output value. Now, in this example, we have f of x equals the nth root of x. This is a generic uh, radical function. Now, when it comes to functions, one of the first things we should identify is the domain. Essentially, look for any restrictions. Domain is defined as all the possible input values, any value of x that we can put into that function to get out a real value uh, of f of x or a, you know, a possible output. So range is also defined as all the possible output values of the function. So when it comes to determining domain of radical functions, it's relatively simple if we just assess the index. Now, we recall the index is this value right here. Which uh, root are we taking? Is it a square root, cubed root, fourth power, or so on? Well, what we know about radicals is if this is an even root, we can't have a negative under the radical. It's not a real value. So if n is even, essentially to find the domain, we can say whatever this value is, it would have to be greater than or equal to 0 if n is even. If n is odd, there will be no domain restrictions, because we can take the odd root of a negative value. A negative times a negative times a negative is still a negative. So odd values have no restrictions. It's the even ones that do. And this is the tool that we use. Whatever the radicand is, we set it greater than or equal to 0. And then we can solve for the variable, and we will know the domain. This will say the domain. The range, well, at this point, we're going to essentially use the graph to determine any range. And the range is the possible outputs of the function. Well, f of x is the same thing as y. So what are all the y outputs if we were to put it on a graph? So let's look at an example of a function. We're asked to graph the function of the square root of x minus 1. Before I graph anything, I want to determine its domain. So to find the domain, I look and say, well, my index is even. It's a square root, meaning an index of 2. So since it's an even index, the radicand has to be greater than or equal to 0. So the radicand, x minus 1, has to be greater than or equal to 0. Now I can solve this inequality. I just need to add 1 to both sides. x has to be greater than or equal to 1. That is my domain. I can leave it in this notation, which is algebraic notation, and say my domain is x greater than or equal to 1. I could put it in set notation and say x such that x is greater than or equal to 1. Or I could put it into interval notation. And generally, we're going to be asked to write it in interval notation. So if x is greater than or equal to 1, from 1, any value greater all the way to infinity. This is my domain, 1 to infinity. So when I go to graph this function, now that I know its domain, I can choose values of 1 or greater and plot some points. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to start with this value here, 1. And I put it in here. 1 minus 1 is 0. The square root of 0 is 0. So when x is 1, my output value f of x, otherwise known as y, is 0. So we're right on the x-axis. So now maybe I want to pick another value. I'm going to choose 2. 2 minus 1 is 1. The square root of 1 is 1. So my input is 2. My output is 1. And because this is not a linear equation, I need more than two points to see what the shape of this function is going to be. So I'm going to choose another value. And I'm going to choose 5. And the reason why I choose 5 is because I'm dealing with square roots. And I know 5 minus 1 gives me 4, a perfect square. So 5 minus 1 is 4. The square root of 4 is 2. So when I put in 5, I get out 2. Now, I'm going to choose another value that's going to give me a perfect square just for graphing purposes. I'm going to use 10, my input of 10, which is still within our domain. 10 minus 1 is 9. 9 is a perfect square. The square root of 9 is 3. So when I put in 10, I get out 3. So now I can kind of see the shape of this function. It starts here, and it looks something like that. It curves as it goes off to the right. 
all uh, square root functions or fourth root functions have a very similar shape. And as we progress in this course, we'll actually explore graphs a little bit uh, more in depthly. And we'll learn about something called library functions. The square root is a library function. Now we can determine the, do the, uh, the range. We have the domain. We put the graph together. And now we can determine the range. Well, the range is the possible outputs. So I look and say, well, what's the lowest possible output? Well, the lowest value is 0, and it includes that point. And then as it goes off to the right, it actually does increase a little. And this would continue to increase as the graph continues. So my range is from its lowest point, which in this case is 0, and it does include 0, all the way to positive infinity. So we have our domain, and we have our range, and we were able to graph it. Now, another thing we might be asked to do is evaluate the function for a piece that maybe might not be on our graph, because my graph only went to an x value of 11. Well, this says find f of 13, which means my input is 13. The first thing I check is, is that within my domain? Yes, it's a value greater than or equal to 1. So I can plug it in. And essentially, that's what I'm going to do, plug it in. The square root of my input value of 13 minus 1 is 12. So I could say f of 13 equals the square root of 12. But that's not technically correct, because we need to simplify our radicals. Well, <clears throat> this does contain a perfect square as a factor, because 4 times 3 is 12. And 4 is a perfect square. So I can take the square root of 4, which is 2 square root of 3. Now, this is finding the value without the use of a calculator. So 2 square root of 3 is the exact value in its simplest form without having to throw it into a calculator and find an approximate value. We found the exact value in simplified form. So <clears throat> you're going to be expected to know how to find the domain. And this is the tool we use. If it's an even index, we set it greater than or equal to 0 for that radicand. And we're going to graph it. Essentially, you could do that by plotting points. And then determine the range from the graph itself and maybe evaluate some other values. Let's look at uh, a function where we're not asked to graph it, but we're still asked to find its domain and maybe evaluate it for some point. Now, if I have the function h of x, which is just some other function, some other y value, h of x equals the square root of 4x minus 2. Well, the first thing I identify is it is an even root. So I have a domain restriction. The radicand must be greater than or equal to 0. So that's going to determine my domain. Essentially, I have to solve for x. So I'm going to add 2 to both sides and then divide by 4. And I am skipping that step. You can work it out if you want. But if I add 2 and divide by 4, I get x has to be greater than or equal to 1 half. So that is my domain in algebraic notation. If I want to put it in interval notation, from 1 half, and it does include that value, to infinity. That will give me positive value, 0 or positive values under that radicand. That is my domain. The next thing, we're asked to find h of 2.1. Now, for many of these, especially when we're dealing with decimals and radicals, if they're not perfect squares, Chances are you're going to have to find an approximate value using a calculator. But I'm going to do a little bit uh, tangent explanation of this. And hopefully, you'll see that you don't always need a calculator. So I'm going to evaluate the function h of x for the value of 2.1. So if I find h of 2.1, this tells me my input value. So I'm going to plug in 4 times the x value. Well, this is my x value that I'm evaluating, minus 2. Now I'm just going to sim simplify the best I can. 4 times 2.1 is 8.4. 8.4 minus 2 is 6.4. Now at this point, you might want to put it into a calculator, because it's not a nice number. But I look at this and say, oh, if only that decimal was over one more spot, that would be a perfect square, 64. So I'm going, like I said, on a little tangent to show you we can get an exact value without a decimal and a simplified radical. So what I'm going to do with 6.4 is I'm going to multiply it by 
10 over 10. It's still under that radical because I don't want to use a calculator. Well, if I do that, I get the square root of 64 over 10. So 6.4, or 6 and 4 tenths, is 64 tenths. Now I have this perfect square. So I'm going to simplify it. So the square root of 64 is 8. And the square root of 10, I'm essentially using that quotient rule we discussed in previous sections. Now I have to rationalize my denominator. Good review of something we've already covered. Well, if I want to rationalize this denominator, it would have to be a perfect square because it is a square root. So I'm going to make it a perfect square by giving it another factor of 10, the square root of 10. And what I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. So now we have 8 times the square root of 10 over the square root of 10 times the square root of 10 is 10. We're squaring a square root. It, it goes away. And now I can simplify my fraction. 8 square root of 10 over 10 is going to be 4 square root of 10 over 5. So f of my 2.1 is the 4, 4 square root of 10 over 5. This is the exact answer. Now, I want you to do one of two things. I want you to plug this value into a calculator on your own, plug it in, and see what decimal value you get. And your calculator has to round it off, so approximate it using a calculator. Then go back to this, this value right here. Plug this into your calculator, and you should get the exact same answer. Because using our calculator gets us to that approximation. This is the exact value. So plug that in and plug this in and compare the two. They should be identical. All right. This example here, we have g of x equals the fourth root of 2x minus 7. I want you to find the domain and then evaluate the function for 9.1. This, go ahead and use a calculator. Don't try to do what I did there, but that was good review for previous sections. So try this one on your own, and good luck. Thank you for watching.